Hello and welcome to this tutorial on sending HL7 messages to Excel. I'm going to start by heading over to HL7 Soup. There's a free 30 day trial if you'd like to follow along. And so we'll start by creating a new receiving workflow. And we could choose our HL7 message to be sent in either via directory scan or from TCP. But first I'll give you a quick overview on how to work with workflows. The green box up the top here represents the configuration of the receiving activity. But watch what happens when I click here. In drops an activity to follow the receiver. Click again, here's another. We can build a workflow that runs for each received message. But before I get ahead of myself, let's give you an overview of our receiver configuration screen. Here, as you might have guessed, is the workflow view panel. It helps you navigate your workflow with ease. Click any activity and you jump straight to viewing its details. You can even jump directly into activities filters or transformers by clicking the buttons here. We'll explain more about these shortly. Notice that you can also adjust the order of your activities with a simple drag and drop. Easy. The central section is the activities detail panel. Here you can configure the properties of the receiver or its activities. It's also the place to adjust what your activities do. It was going to send it to another TCP address, but now the message will be written to a file. On the right we have the message logs. Here you can search for and look at the messages that have been received by this workflow. We'll come back here shortly and I'll show you more once I have sent a message. Across the top here are the Windows controls. From right to left we firstly have a link for help and then forward and back navigator buttons so I can traverse the workflow screens easier. Then the close window button, the save and close, save and export. So let's quickly create a real workflow. I'll make a pattern that receives an HL7 message, then extract the patient details and write them to a CSV file that can be loaded into Excel for future analysis. Firstly, I navigate to my receiving activity and I'm going to select it will come from TCP, which is the HL7 standard. I'm happy to take the default server settings and accept this message into port 22222. The message type will be HL7, but we could also accept XML or CSV. I don't need the inbound message to be loaded into HR7 Soup's main screen, so I'll uncheck here. And I want the response message to be handled for me after all the activities have been processed. Finally, I'm going to place this message template here. This is a message that looks like what most of my inbound messages will be. It will help me later, and I'll show you how soon. Before that though, let's skim figure how we'll write the CSV file out. I'll navigate to this activity and we will change it to a file writer. Now I just have to give it a file location, say C temp patient CSV, and we will set that message type to CSV. Once again, I'm going to put in the message template. I could just bind this in from another activity like so, but as we're creating a new message, I will just type in my CSV messages structure. I want it to show the patient's ID, first name, last name, and date of the message. So I type them in here. Now comes the fun part. We're going to map the values of the inbound HR7 message to the CSV message. And we do that with transformers. Let's click here to edit them. Transformers are an incredibly powerful feature with capabilities well beyond the scope of this video. But if you click the link in the comments, you can watch our Transformers video that goes into much greater depth. For now though, notice we have a source tree and a destination tree that are generated from the message templates we place into the activity. You can edit those message templates here too, and the changes automatically reflect back in the activity properties. The general goal of transformers is to take values from the source tree and map them into values in the destination tree. The mappings will show here and their details show here. For example, we find the patient's family name in the PID 5.1 and we drag it across into the last name field of our destination tree. We've now created a mapping between the messages that joins the messages together. 
Let's do the same thing for the patient's first name and their ID. Great. For the date of the message, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use a variable directly in the destination message template. I simply select the placeholder text in the date field and right click and insert a variable called current date time. This message template will now show the current date each time a message is processed. The current date time variable is built in, but you can map your own ones here. I'm now going to remove this additional activity that I don't need. I can just disable it if it was only for a temporary removal. It's worth noting if a workflow is saved with an activity that's not filled out correctly, it will automatically be disabled. Enable it again like this once you have finished the problem. But as I'm not going to need it at all, I'll just delete it. OK, one last thing before we run this. I want to create a filter so that we now only process ADT messages. Filters can be added to any activity as a form of flow control, but in this case we want to add it to the receiver. Clicking the filters icon takes us to the filters screen. Here I will add a filter and adjust the address to MSH 9.1 where the value is equal to ADT. Great. Our workflow is written. Let's save it and then navigate across to the main HL7 soup screen and we can test this out. We have to start this workflow running first and we'll do that by clicking the start receiving button. And now we can use our sender to start processing some messages. We could send the individual messages by clicking here, but I'm going to click the play button and let the automatic sender run them through automatically. I'll leave this to do its thing and we'll go back to the workflow editor and take a look at the logs. I click the refresh button down here to refresh this list and we can see the messages coming in. Refresh again and there are more messages. Notice how the filtered ones show as grey so they're easily identifiable. Each message has an ID plus processing and completed dates. We can also expand the message to see the details of the activities too. Each of the activities are also expandable, so you can view the source message, response message, and if we had any errors, they would show and list the details here too. Okay, so let's take a look at the file we've created. Because it's CSV, it'll load straight into Excel ready for your analysis. Let's go one step further and have HL7Soup sort out the messages into different files. It could be by patient or any other value. But in this sample, I'm going to name the file for its event type. All we have to do is edit our receiver again, navigate to our transformers, and create an MSH 9.2 variable by dragging it from the source message into the transformer list. Now we have a variable, just navigate to the file writer and place it in the file path by right clicking and selecting our newly created variable. I'll save this and then send a message through. And look, we have the message type in the file name. Easy. We hope you found this tutorial useful. Please feel free to post any questions you might have into the comments and you'd help us out greatly if you click like. Also, you could subscribe to this channel for more videos on the HL7 subject. Thank you.